Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. Recently, I was investigating some more images or distributions for the Pinebook Pro. And I was intrigued by Kali Linux from Offensive Security. And I found a page where you can download an image for the Pinebook Pro. And you can supposedly download it with a torrent. And that's when I noticed that there is no default torrent client. And in my opinion, a Linux distribution should come with a torrent client. Perhaps it's just me, but I think this is essential. The good part is, is that there are plenty of torrent clients and probably you have your own preference. So when we search for torrent, the first one that comes up is KTorrent. That's the one I'm going to install for now as we're on, or at least I am on KDE. So KTorrent should fit in just fine. And well, let's say we want all the plugins. Here we go. Yes, apply. And it's installed. So now when we say, now it gives you the option to open it with KTorrent. And we'll just go with the defaults. And here it goes. And it looks like there are no cedars. So that's a bit of a pity. And when we search for oh, I think you can also just download it from here you can directly download the image so that works. So to download the Kali Linux image for the Pinebook Pro, well, it looks like there are no seeders, so there's no point. But it was more to show that I was a bit surprised that Manjaro KDE, at least for the Pinebook Pro, it doesn't come with a torrent client by default. And that also gave me some thinking and perhaps some other people, when you've watched my previous videos, I also prefer to have Gparted. On the other hand, I do hope that if you're not interested that you never have to use it. Um, I also use simple screen recorder. Perhaps that's also not something everyone is going to use. But I would say a torrent client, there's a 
pretty big chance that you will use it. And also one of the other things is VLC. I mean, it does come with SM player and media player, but I prefer VLC. And that also got me thinking that I also would like to have a dedicated music player. So in this case, I picked Audacious. And one of the reasons I picked Audacious is that it also has support for some old music formats. And well, I actually still have the Amiga hardware. I haven't done much with it lately. But there's something like Aminet, and there you can still download the old software, and in this case also like the music modules. And I think, at least on Aminet, all of it is public domain. Perhaps some of the music, they will use some samples from commercial music, so I guess it was published in public domain with the best intentions, but you can wonder about the legality when they're using samples of commercial music. But that's a whole different story. So I also already installed Audacious and I downloaded two music modules. And that's also where I noticed that Manjaro, they don't have a good support for archives in old formats like LHA. And that's where I had to install X Archiver. So when you install X Archiver, you get a menu where you can in install a lot of different formats. And one is the LHA, which is used a lot for the Amiga. And it's also interesting that, I mean, nowadays everyone probably knows MP3 or Flock, and there are files that take the whole music file, but the music modules, they are sort of like programmed files. So they have the samples and they also have the instructions to play it. So they can be very, very small and still produce surprisingly good music. So one music module is 128 kilobytes. The other one is, let's just say 400 kilobytes. So that's less than half a megabyte. And I'm not really sure if the microphone will pick it up. And of course, when you play this on some high quality equipment, sure it won't be as good as professional music, but it's still not bad. And of course, with a dedicated music player, you can repeat the songs. You can shuffle them, well, with just two songs, that doesn't make much sense. But of course, when you add more files, then those options are really handy. And I think that's, oh, yeah. So here, there's also options to shuffle by album. So.
And the last thing that I was missing a bit was a simple program to edit pictures. So I installed color paint and Shotwell. And for instance, Shotwell is quite nice just to do some quick editing of photos. Well, in this case, this is just the just a screenshot. And you can rotate, you can crop, you can straighten. You can try to reduce red eye. You can adjust color and tone. Here there are some filters. It's just, just enhance, okay. Um, but Shotwell is nice, but it's still not a simple picture editor that I was looking for. So let's just say, when we use color paint, and then we say open. So here we have that screenshot again. And let's just say, when I just want to add some simple text. And I mean, of course, this is not Photoshop or a Photoshop replacement. But yeah, when you just want to do some quick things, then at least uh, it's possible. Just wondering if I could replace it or just move it around. But it looks like once, oh, no, when you're just on the edge, yeah, then you can move it around. And of course, there's like free format drawing. So, like I say, I want to draw just a simple arrow. I'm not really a graphics artist, but at least you can do some simple stuff very quickly. And yeah, if you want to do some more complicated stuff, then probably you'll be better suited with the GIMP. But I think the GIMP has a steeper learning curve. And this is just simple enough for me just to do some quick stuff. So if you have any suggestions on what you think is essential software that you would like to see installed by default, just add it in the comments. And if you have like any software that you want me to test, then I'm also open for those kind of suggestions. It's not necessarily that I will make a video about it, but I will try to help you. And I've already done that with one other person. So I would love to see some suggestions and I will try to follow up on them. So that's all for now. And I hope to see you again in my next video.